Hey everyone, this is going to be a short video um, examining this toy I got at Goodwill. Um, I just want to kind of use it as a platform to talk a little bit about um, some of the electronics inside. Um, it does have an error, which we'll see if we can fix along the way. Um, so think of it as a tutorial, a little bit, as well as hopefully just a fun exploration of this device. Um, tools I need for this, got myself a flathead screwdriver, got myself a Phillips screwdriver, I got myself a multimeter, and I already happened to do a little bit of leg work because I knew I would need it. Um, and I also have myself a little wall adapter um, with this barrel plug, which just happens to meet this back barrel plug, um, and it's appropriate for this. So before we get going um, into the details of what's inside, let's do a quick rundown of the outside. A um, couple things that I'm noticing here. Uh, we've got a speaker hole, we've got what's probably a battery container on the back. We have some type of an external power adapter here in the back. A um, couple things to note. Um, most companies, at least good companies, are going to list what type of power adapter you need. Uh, this symbol here, it's going to be a little hard to see in the video, but it's got a negative inside of a circle, and it goes to the outside ring, and then there's a center dot, and then a positive. This is what's called a center positive meaning that it's expecting the plug you put into it to put the positive voltage in the center and the ground on the outside. It's expecting it to be DC 5 volts. There's no tolerance on that, so try to get as close as you can. And it's requesting that you supply it something that can supply up to 500 milliamps. It's not that it's going to draw that or that it really needs that, but it needs something that's at least 500 milliamps of source. So uh, we could use a 1 amp or a 2 amp device for this to power it, but it would still, um, it claims it only needs the 500 milliamps. So looking at the device I got here, this is just a D-Link thing that I grabbed out of a bin of stuff, and it's pretty challenging to read probably on the video, but right here it's output of 5 volts uh, DC, and it's 2 amps. So this is way in excess of what we actually need to power this little device over here. Um, it also has a similar little symbol to what we were describing. Um, actually, this one doesn't have the symbol showing how it's polarized. So, uh, yeah, so I don't really know how it's set up. Let's plug it in and let's find out, make sure it's going to be the right thing for us. All right. Got our handy dandy multimeter. We're going to measure volts. Shouldn't be more than the 5 volts like we identified, so we got that. Got our two probes. We are in the correct two spots, the common, and then the spot for measuring the voltage there. Let's go ahead and let's make sure that we have a center positive connection. It's like, yes, so a little over 5 volts. Um, I know that that's center positive because I put the positive sensing lead on the inside and this on the out and the ground or reference lead on the outside. If it had been a negative number, I would have known that the outside of this was actually the positive side. But since it's not, I know I'm good to go. All right, great. Okay, a um, couple other little things we can just assume from this, We've got some buttons, things like that, is that since this system can be powered from battery, there's got to be some type of a power regulator inside. Um, the reason is two batteries together, well actually let's make sure it's two batteries, I'm pretty sure we're right, but two batteries together is only about three volts on the high side. Um, and so that is the power that it probably needs to use. Now, in modern electronics, there's a couple solutions though. Um, you could boost that three volts up to the five, or, okay, and actually we have three triple A's inside, not double. So that's around 4.5 volts. Odds are, because it's so close to the value of what's going into this uh, barrel plug, it probably only needs about four and a half volts. So there may be a voltage regulator inside taking it down, but there's no guarantee. Okay. Um, let's see what this thing does though before I pull it up, because I do want to try to fix it. Looks like we have an alarm. Oh God, that's loud and annoying. So if we see this to screen here, we notice there's some kind of missing pixels. Um, it's trying to display 12 noon there. I think we can see it. And you see how it looks like there's some non-blackened pixels that should be there. Um, there's actually quite a few of them on this display. So this traditionally, since I'm not seeing a crack in the display, means that the soldering inside or a connector has come loose over time. So that's the type of troubleshooting we're going to look for when we pull this thing apart. Other features of this awesome thing is we have the ability to project the time 
press this button and this display you can see kind of the green glow right here it's trying to project the time on the wall it has to be really dark to see this and we have the option display an image and so that's going to be over on this other side here and it's really faint as well you can kind of see the blue glow and we can even twist this little dial wherever that dial is and we can change the image Woo! so we have different projections for a night kind of a neat little simple thing um, i more got it because i like the shape and it was cheap okay let's pull it apart and see what we got going on inside whenever you're going to pull apart electrical system you always want to unpower it to begin with um, because you never know what type of voltages might be inside that being said something like this when i'm only putting in five volts i have almost no worries uh, being able to manipulate or do stuff with it. So I'm going to take a few seconds here to unscrew all this um, and then we'll jump into our next video.